So, you know, to leave this world, the Prophet Sallallahu he said, لا تكم الساعة حتى يمر الرجل على قبر الرجل ويقول يا ليتني مكانه That the hour is not going to be established, the last day is not going to come until uh, a man passes by the grave of another man and he says, I wish I was in his place. So he, you know, from being overwhelmed with the world and fitna and trials, tribulations, misfortunes, calamities, everything coming at you so fast, you believe in that moment that death is better for you than life. Okay, so let's go back to the complexity problem. See, I, I actually think it's the, in some sense, it's the fundamental problem. When, when you read about the terror management theorist types, and they think that death is the fundamental problem. And that's a good argument, because it's definitely a fundamental problem, but I think it's a subset of the complexity problem. And, and the reason I think that is because sometimes people's lives become so complex that they'd rather be dead. So, and the reason they seek death when, through suicide is to make the complexity go away. Because complexity causes suffering if it's uncontrolled. You know, things just get beyond your control. And so you would pass by the grave of a person and say that I wish I was in that person's place. Not realizing that although you are escaping the pain that is associated with the worldly life, but now you have a new set of things to worry about. And that's the three questions that Munkar and Nakir are going to ask you in your grave. Men rabbuk wa ma dinuk wa man nabiyuk. Who is your Lord? What is your religion? And, what is your pro and who is your prophet? Um, and that can happen. You know, if you're hit by three or four catastrophes at the same time, you know, maybe you have, if, oh, the political system collapses, there's hyperinflation, you lose your job and you have someone that you love or two people die and maybe you get cancer, something like that. Like that, those things happen to people and they just think, well, there's no getting out of this. Like, it's just too much. So you, t you get rid of some baggage, but then you take on a whole new set of baggage. You get rid of some problems, right? Trading places. You get rid of some problems, but then you take on a new set of problems that are probably far more, far more drastic, far more, you know, <laughs> distressful than the, the than the you you would much rather the the calamity and the misfortunes in this life than you know what is waiting for you in the first, in the grave as the earth man or Allah said I know he said Akhwafu ma akhafu ala nafsi awwal layla fil qabr. Uthman or Allah said, I know he said that the thing that I fear the most for myself is my first night in the grave. You understand? The thing that I fear the most for myself is my first night in the grave. Your first night anywhere is enough to bring about some level of anxiety and fear. Your first night in jail, you don't know what to expect. Your first night in college on a college campus. You don't really know what they expect. Your first night anywhere, your first night in marriage, you know, if you've never been married before, it's your first time with a man or your first time with a woman, you know, you're sweating, you're, you're feeling, you, you have the anxiety, you have the fear, you have the stress, you have the, you know, you, you're going through the motions. Your first night anywhere is going to be a little difficult to process. But your first night in the grave, that's a whole nother level, a whole other level of fear and anxiety. You, you might want to stay put in this life before you even think about experiencing that. And you know, one of the things that's very interesting about being a psychologist is that what you learn if you're going to be a psychologist is that people come to you with mental illnesses. And that's almost never true. People come to you because their lives are so damn complicated they cannot stay on top of them in any way that doesn't make it look like they're just going to get more complicated. And so then that causes symptoms, you know, it's like, there's this old idea, it's sort of a metaphor for genetic susceptibility. Take a balloon and blow it up until it's beyond its tolerance, it's going to blow out at the weakest point. Well, that's sort of what a genetic susceptibility is. If I just keep adding complexity on top of you, at some point you'll blow out at your weakest point. You know, maybe you'll get physiologically ill, maybe you'll start drinking, maybe you'll develop an anxiety disorder, maybe you'll get OCD, maybe you'll get depressed. Whatever, there'll be something about you that's the weakest point, and if I just push, that's where you'll blow out. So that's a mental illness, but those things almost never just happen. Sometimes, but not very often. Usually people have just been hammered like two or three different ways, and then they collapse in the direction of their biological weakness, and then maybe you put them back together. But 
it's almost always a complexity related phenomena rather than a mental illness related phenomena not always but almost always you know for some people it's just you know I'm tired of living you know let me transition you know but Ruthman all the allah I know he said the thing that I fear the most for myself is my first night in the grave you don't know what to expect it's all kicks and giggles while your relatives and your family members are standing around you at the grave but it gets real when they lower that thing down into the into the ground and everybody kind of disperses and goes back to where they came you know and it's just you <laughs> you understand it's just you no credit card no gun no goons no friends no homies no girls no children no nothing just you you know what I mean? Yeah. None of your worldly resources.